Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I can work with that. Damn, I was kind of hoping for Sludge Rock, though. Welcome back to the second installment of the series that I'm loosely titling, I Make Blah 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 Music, to prove it's easy. The series where I create music from a specific genre as quickly and easily as I possibly can to prove, say it with me guys, that it's easy. Yes, yes, my viewers are very smart. I had such a fun time making the first video in this style, making noise music, that I knew I officially wanted to make this a series. So let me know in the comments what genre you think I should tackle for the next installment. But that is then and this is now. I have a very important question to answer. Finding the genre to infiltrate next, which is not a question. I went through some options in my head and I think the genre I landed on is gonna be something quite fun, Vaporwave. It's kind of the internet genre and it has a lot of different definitions over the years. So it gives me a lot of wiggle room to kind of fuck around and still end up with a product that I can pretty safely call Vaporwave. But to make Vaporwave, I have to experience Vaporwave. I have to admire Vaporwave. I gotta date the marble. And I'm be honest, I don't really know much about Vaporwave besides like a few listens to an album here or there, you know, Floral Shop, and some albums that my patrons have recommended me for my listening series, I've Been Listening Shit, which is only five bucks a month if you recommend me, you could submit me now to listen to for a video review. Kind of a steal, in my opinion. First try! So I gotta get in the mind space of a Vaporwave god, someone who knows this genre like the back of their hand. And lucky for me, I found a Vaporwave for Dummies video on my local Red Lobster. It's seen better days, but this should get the job done. All right, so for some reason, Jake took one look at my channel and said, yeah, this guy knows about Vaporwave. Luckily, this is a genre that was born on the internet, so there's a lot of information about this genre on the internet. So this is going to be the equivalent to, yeah, you can copy my homework, just change it up a little bit so you don't get caught. Got to pull out the green screen for this guy. Our story of Vaporwave starts back in the 80s, okay? For some reason, a lot of people have glorified this decade throughout the years. Despite a lot of massive shit that was going on at the time, you know, no decade is a perfect decade. A lot of people are still convinced that they are born in the wrong generation. And this uh, kind of feeling of nostalgia for a time that you haven't lived in is a very big factor, a very big trait in the Vaporwave style. Flash forward to about 2010, okay, this dude named Daniel Loperton, also known as 10 Tricks Point Never, decided to kind of make this like joke album called Echo Jams Volume 1. This is like a Plunder Phonics album that is kind of known as like the birth of Vaporwave. Daniel takes a lot of these like 80s samples, you know, there's Africa by Toto on this thing, which is kind of was weird to hear but he takes a lot of these like 80 samples and he kind of chops them up and just drenches them in like reverb and delay he transforms these samples into this uh, style of music that i can only kind of describe as listening to a radio station from an alternate dimension kind of later that same year we got this guy named uh fucking james ferrero he released this album called bar side virtual which is another very big important release in the pre-vaporwave era bar side virtual introduces this kind of style of a corporate capitalistic commentary into the genre of vaporwave if uh, echo jam sounds like a uh, radio station from an alternate dimension far side virtual sounds like a weird corporate training video from an alternate dimension basically we got these two albums the mother and the father of vaporwave they had a baby called macintosh plus floral shop <laughs> macintosh plus floral shop is the vaporwave album that everyone pretty much knows you know i show you this guy you go oh it's that thing that goes Once again, we got the we got the idea of taking a bunch of samples from the 80s, chopping them up, slowing them down, drenching them in reverb, and just looping and looping and looping them. And this album also kind of, I feel like, brought in this kind of visual aesthetic to Vaporwave, you know? The the pastel-like colors, you know, the the statues, the, uh, the collages of early internet memorabilia-type vibes, you know, the, the cups, the paper cups with the fucking wave lines on it. And this album kind of brought Vaporwave into a new light of popularity very quickly. Quickly, the genre kind of got birthed and died, you know? What a cruel world we live in, man. <laughs> but while everyone was saying Vaporwave is dead, there's a lot of people who were in the kitchen cooking, you know? Blank Banshee released this album, which infused this Vaporwave type style with like these trap beats, you know? It's kind of a weird experience. I actually wasn't expecting, I listened to like the first few tracks of this thing, 
not expecting it at all. <laughs> and then we got a, uh, you know, Echo Virtual that kind of made this kind of atmospheric elevator music type vibe. You know, you're taking the elevator and the elevator doesn't stop at the top floor. The elevator just kind of keeps shooting up and then eventually you're just floating in the, in the clouds. You see the birds coming by. And then at this point, Vaporwave kind of started developing as a genre and kind of people started taking it a little bit more serious, I feel like. But yeah, that's basically it. I don't know if Jake really wants me to say anything else than that, but uh, that's all I got for you, dude. So hopefully this works. Works. <laughs>I thought it'd be a Frank Jaff C video, but I mean, yeah, I guess this works. So now that I know the history of the genre, it's time to make my own. Damn, that sounded way cooler than what I'm actually going to do. <laughs> but this is where the shit starts getting a little hazy again. There are so many genres of vaporwave. Like, look at this shit. This is English. So my hopes were low. I thought I'd actually have to try in this video. Until I stumbled upon a subgenre of vaporwave that I think is perfect for this video. Barber Beats. Now half of you just rolled your eyes when I said that, and the other half of you were like, what the hell is Barber Beats? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm here to explain. That's what this video is about anyway. Barber Beats is a subgenre of vaporwave that's kind of been a bit controversial in the scene. Its divisiveness comes from the sampling technique. Vaporwave as a genre has its roots deeply planted in sampling, so, you know, nothing new there. But Barber Beats is a little messy, because of how much the sample is used and how minimal the changes are. I made an entire video on my stance on sampling and music if you're curious, but collectively the outrage comes because, essentially, Barber Beats is just getting a song, slowing it down, and putting some reverb on it. And that's basically it. It's literally slowed and reverb if it was a genre. So larger Barber Beats artists like Macro Blank or Haircuts for Men or Oblique Obsessions have about as equal number of fans as they have detractors. And some have kind of moved away from that original Barber Beats production style, but it, my point still stands. But you guys know my stance on sampling. If it sounds good, then hey, all is fair in love and copyright. And after this epiphany, I thought to myself, what an easy genre on paper, you know? Like I really barely have to do anything. So it is official. My vaporwave subgenre will be Barber Beats. Now it is time to make the shit. I mean, it's kind of straightforward, you know? Find song, slow down, reverb, profit. So I sat down and I combed through a lot of songs that had that nostalgic, vaporwavy sound and bonus points if the artist had a higher register to their voice, because me personally, I like the sound of a high pitched vocalist pitched down. There's actually a playlist on YouTube called Rare Samples, and I just kind of thumbed through it for a little bit until I found some songs I felt had some potential. And those songs are the following. Hurry Up Tomorrow by The Neurons. Love is Blue by John Sangster. Girl from Crete by Trevor Duncan. And Touching Your Feelings by Jim Marks. I am trying to touch your love. All these songs had the vibe I was going for, and they'd be the perfect fit as the base for my Barber Beats project. Then I opened FL Studio to start the actual music making process. Also, unlike the noise music video, I actually saved the working file. Yes, yes, thank you. Now I can just show you what I did instead of having to redo everything again. As I'm recording this, I'm kind of seeing a lot of similarities between the noise music and this because the production style and the technique is kind of similar. Just take the song, stretch it out, and then throw on some reverb. Now, I wanted to spice it up like a little bit, like any Joe Schmo can just take a song, stretch it, and then call it a day. So I wanted to somehow make the album like a cohesive piece. So I had all the songs in the same FL file. I added sounds and assets to the beginning and the end of these songs. So when you listen to the album front to back, it's like a seamless listening experience. I added some noise sound effects between the first and second track to transition into the drums. I added a little drum and synth bit at the end of track two. and a sound effect to blend track two and three together. And the last track, I got a little carried away with myself, with more effects than usual and a cute little outro with ocean sound effects and weird grunting vocal samples. Ah. 
something to give this project like a slight chance to stand out in the vaporwave scene. Now you're probably wondering how you're gonna mix and master this. Simple answer is, I'm not, it's vaporwave, it's supposed to sound shitty. And after all that, export the whole file, bring it back in, chop its song points, save individually. Ladies and gentlemen, we got an EP on our hands. For these type of videos, I feel weirdly like making the music is the easy part. The hard part is standing out. Because if I just upload this thing online as like Barber Beats Jake and just pull like a Donda album cover, then I'm going to get nowhere fast. I feel like even Vaporwave fans will admit a big appeal to the genre is its aesthetic. So the presentation of this album is almost going to be more important than what it sounds like. I need to wow. I need to get some eyebrows raised if I want my little lifeboat to tread water in this vaporwave ocean. So I need to start with a vibe, a direction, an identity to base my creative process around. Something that goes hard, but also has this quasi-ironic vibe to it. For some reason, the word blood sport kept coming to mind. Like, it sounded hard, but it was also, like, ironic, because, like, it's not even close to how you describe the music. But I wasn't in love with it. Until I distinctively remember my line of thinking, like, a blood sport game, like, a blood sport, like, contest, a, a blood sport, just that, a blood sport. Allow me to introduce to you the new hot vaporwave artist on the scene, a blood sport, stylized in all lowercase, because I'm mysterious. Alright, so now I know who I am, but what did I make? I knew I wanted to go for the foreign language trend, because that's kind of a big gimmick in the genre. So the title and the track list didn't like really matter because a lot of the people who are going to be listening to this need to use Google Translate to see what it is anyway. So I decided to get a little meta with it. The Pirate EP. Do you get it? Because like Pirate and Steel. Well, technically it's the Pirate Extended Play EP because I wanted like a longer title and it was just too short like that. Whatever. And the Pirate EP would officially consist of four tracks. Orange, Iron Iron, When Can I Stop, and of course... Blood sports. All right, now we got the vibe and the details down. Time for the fun part, album artwork. Arguably the single most important aspect to Barber Beats and just Vaporwave as a whole. When you go to the Vaporwave section of Bandcamp, you will not see a subpar album cover in sight. They're all bangers. Because, I mean, if you're not wowing anyone with a crazy or unique production style, might as well give them a crazy and unique album cover to initially gain interest. So now it's time to make the album cover, and if you know anything about me, I'm a graphic designer, so that's kind of in my wheelhouse, and this is my chance to have my creativity shat on the screen. My first initial thought for a Vaporwave album cover was probably yours too, a marble statue, you know, it's tried and true, but it's kind of been done to death in the genre, so let's get a little bit wacky. I wanted abstract, I wanted distorted, but I still wanted Vaporwave. So I immediately went to Dolly for my assets. Listen, relax, I know, AI's taken over, but I mean... If you can't beat them, join them, and it kind of fits the vibe for the experiment. Plus, if you know what to type in there, you can get some heat out of it. I wanted to go for like a water aesthetic here, because the reverb soak music and the last track literally having ocean samples on it, I think it was kind of a no-brainer. So I tried some inputs and I finally landed on this. A scanned 70s magazine of a person drowning another person abstract. And it generated this image. Kind of fucking hard if you ask me. I also used another image from this input as the artist's profile picture. But this is where things got wild, because I got all the ingredients, and now I just gotta smash them together. Because if I fuck up a Vaporwave release, then the race is over before it even started. I wanted to go with the cassette tape open J-card aesthetic. Like, if there was to be a cassette release of this, then the packaging would just be the album cover, and the album cover would just be the packaging. You know? I know. So I created this little J-card template for myself to keep everything in line. I also use like a cut paper aesthetic here, keeping the scanned magazine vibe that the original image gave me, so I kind of just ran with that. I added some heavy grain and a folded paper texture, giving it this old and weathered look like the cassette tape existed first, and you took the packaging out and scanned that as the album cover. Even though I did the digital first and then made it look scanned, I thought it was cool. Then I went and found space for the titles, like the name, the EP, the track list, and all that good stuff. Then all that was left was to add the cut paper borders, add folds and rips, slap the Catching Big Fish logo on it, and hide a secret message in the top left. And done. Not to fondle my own balls or anything, but I'm kind of pleased with how this turned out. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Pirate EP.
All righty. So I have in front of me, done, D-U-N-N, -N, finito. Now, what do I do with it? Well, first step's easy. Go where Vaporwave lives, Bandcamp, and slap it up there. You know, upload it, make sure the page looks pretty, and, you know, why not? Release it on my birthday. Now, the last video's plan was to plant this album in my viewers' heads, not tell them it's me, and present Purified Oil's joy as something that I just stumbled upon. They listened to it and tell me if it was good unbiasedly. And I'd say it was pretty successful. I had someone give it a 9.5 out of 10. I don't care who you are, that's a win in my book. But because I did kind of trick my audience, I feel like their guards are going to be up. I posted a screenshot of me listening to this on my Instagram, and some people could already tell something was up. So I need a new checkpoint for me to consider this video a success and this genre infiltrated. So I sat and pondered over a glass of wine. What is the ultimate high mark of success for a vaporwave artist? It's getting signed. Imagine it now. A Blood Sports Pirate EP presented by Records. Kind of sounds dope. But who can I get to even give me the time of day? I bet Geometric Lullaby and other Vaporwave labels are probably swarmed with people submitting their albums daily. So let's think here. Let's put our noodles together. I mean, Pad Chennington owns a record label. Catskill Records. A Vaporwave record label. Oh shit, this might work! Alright, Pad. Hear me out. I just found this new Vaporwave artist, and they kind of fuck. They go by the name A Bloodsport, and they just dropped their first project, The Pirate EP, a few months ago. And I think you should sign them. Okay, I'm intrigued. Catskill Records is always looking for new Vaporwave artists. Great. Okay, I'll uh, send you over the stuff right now. All right, word. I just got it. Let me open it. Uh, one second. Hold on. Let me play it a little bit. Okay, yeah, all right, this is definitely something. I'm sure I can squeeze this on the label. No shot. Oh my god, I did it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, what do you mean you did it? Oh, uh, I'm his uh, manager, and I made him sign a really uh, shitty contract. Okay, whatever, dude. Yeah, I'll get back to you about the logistics and the vinyl dimensions. Uh, I'll see you later. Oh my god. I did it. I got signed making Vaporwave. I got signed making Barber Beats. D I did it. The video's a success. Oh my god. I'm gonna be famous. I got vinyl records made. I'm gonna be on the cover of magazines. And most importantly, I can say with concrete certainty that I got a record deal making Vaporwave to prove it's e Uh, yeah, we got a voice message from Pad. Uh... Hey Jake, so I scrolled down on Bandcamp and saw this is entirely uncleared samples and we don't rock with that here at Catskill Records, so yeah, bye. Well, I, I mean, I was signed for like 48 seconds, like technically. Ah, uh, Fuck. I'm counting it. Hang on before you leave, I want to take a minute to thank the creators that made this video possible. A huge shout out to Kyle Reed for making the brief history of Vaporwave. I thought his production style would be perfect at delivering a condensed history of such a huge genre. Yeah, the video came out great, I loved it, and you didn't hear it from me, but I might be appearing on his channel in the future, or I might have already did. If I did, the link is above, but if not, it's probably coming soon. So big thank you to Kyle Reed. I really appreciate it. And from what he told me, apparently I'm responsible for him becoming addicted to vaporwave music again. And I don't know if I should apologize or if you should thank me. Also, a huge thank you to Pad Chanting being in this. I thought his part was really funny. And with Catskill Records and his vaporwave pass, I thought it'd be a great way to kind of put a bow on this whole video project. Shout out to Pad. He's a real one and like the godfather of YouTube vaporwave. So like, you had to put him in this video. Like, who else was I going to put in? Fucking Frank Jaffsey. I really tried to get a Bloodsport signed and the Pirate EP on a label, but, you know, with the uncleared sample nature, it's a minefield for labels. 
If you're curious and want to see if I truly made a solid Barber Beats project, like I said, the entire project is on Bandcamp for free, and it will be on YouTube some point later. And maybe on Patreon, I'm not too sure yet. But if you're walking away feeling a little bit bamboozled that there's no clear line of success for this, without saying anything to anybody, I had one person successfully support this on Bandcamp. Fucking dank Zappa. Living proof that this project is a success. Also, I really wanted to make a physical release for this, like how I did for my noise music video. I was gonna have a cassette of the Pirate EP, but it was entirely uncleared samples, and I just, it felt wrong to profit off of that, even if it was minimal, or just to have something for you guys to, you know, keep as a keepsake. So, no physicals this time, but next project I will be sure to not use any illegal samples, so that way there will be a physical version of this record so that you guys can have it. Let me know what you think of the album, let me know what you think of the video, and let me know what projects or what genres you want me to infiltrate in the future to kind of keep this series going. I like it a lot and it's a fun little thing to do because, you know, you'll never know if uh, one album that I'm promoting on my social media was made by me. That's the fun part. That's how I know I made something that's pretty interesting. But with all that yapping out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. Damn, it's been a while since I've made like an actual outro. I hope I remember how to do it. Hard cut.